Hi dancers, welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Nefabit. Today we're going to be working on the three-point turn and the chenet. It's essentially the same movement, but when you do continuous three-point turns, it becomes a chenet. This is a really common step, but is also commonly done poorly. And it's only because we don't really spend a lot of time on this move in an average belly dancing class. Uh, I do have ballet background, and so I have some really helpful tips for doing this turn gracefully, safely, elegantly, and nice and uh, strong. So I hope that you will enjoy it. If you do, be sure to click like, and I hope you'll subscribe for more videos, which will be coming out soon. Okay, so let's think about where the turn really originates from. And I always joke with my students in my regular classes that the turn isn't really what turning is about. Everything except turning around is what's important with the turn, and that's probably not going to make any sense until I explain to you how to do this. So when we think about a turn, we have to imagine uh, a gyroscope or something that is going to be turning on a central axis. And the most important thing is that everything stays very stable and very symmetrical. The second most important thing is that everything is very strong from underneath. So our alignment, our posture, our, our form is what's most important with the turn. Once you have all of that structure in place and you know how to execute the turn, turning around is the easy part. So we're just going to start at the very beginning, which is with the feet. The most important thing with turning, number one, if you have bad knees, bad ankles, bad toes, you really need to proceed very carefully and I would really recommend only working on this with a teacher who can help to guide you. Uh, you can leave questions for me, but of course there's only so much information that I can give you over the internet. So just proceed with caution with that. Even if you don't have any issues with your leg joints, you can very easily develop these problems if you do these turns incorrectly. So I'll show you what not to do first because I feel like that is sometimes the most important thing to clarify. And the very, very important thing with safety is that we don't twist or torque our legs. So this is extremely common and, and it, I see it so much it makes me hold my breath when I see it because I'm so worried that someone's going to hurt themselves. But for example, if I want to do a turn and I maybe don't quite know how, um, and I start to go and I'm afraid I'm going to stay on, my, t on my, my feet nice and flat so I feel safe and grounded. Uh, the problem with that is that your upper body can twist at more of a rate than your leg and your lower body. So when you have the foot flat like this, and I start to twist, if you do that, if you just were to do that very you know, slowly and carefully and safely up here, you're going to start to feel that all the muscles around your leg bones will twist, but the leg bones themselves stay put because the foot is stationary. These bones cannot turn if the foot does not turn. So, that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to do all of our traveling steps and all of our turns on the balls of the feet or on releve. And this is a term that is borrowed from French ballet terminology that upset some people, but that's just what I grew up with and that's what I will refer to it as. But when we're on the toes, this is very important because this allows us to turn and pivot safely because you can see as soon as I do a little turn, just a little pivot there and twisting around, my whole leg moves with me, right? So if I show you just a basic chenet on my toes, you're going to see that the toe, the ankle, the knee, and the hip all stay in one line. So let's break down the basic step of a chenet turn without all of the frills. We're just going to go over the actual pathway and we'll sort of put all of the elements into it as we go. But um, I'm going to face away so that you can really see my form. So we're going to start with the weight on the opposite leg. So if I'm going to turn, this would be my right or clockwise, I'm going to start with my weight on my left. Now sometimes you'll see people prepare with the foot to the front and sometimes to the side. I prefer to the side, it is up to you, okay? <laughs> it's one of the only things that is really truly up to you, the rest of it you absolutely have to do. But this one, the most important thing though is that when you step, you're going to step directly to your side, not 
almost to the side, not to the corner, not behind you. It has to go directly parallel to front, so 90 degrees from your front. And you're going to change your weight, again, pushing through the ball of your foot. Now, since we're going to work on nice and slow right now, I'm just going to step flat, but normally you would step up onto your relevé. We're going to step flat so I can move slowly. All right. So you change your weight, and then you're going to bring your other foot around you, weight in the toe, pivot both your toes to the front. Very important. Do not leave one foot behind. Don't let your feet turn in or out, okay? They have to stay parallel to each other. And then this is the hard part. This is where spotting will come in handy, but we'll talk about that shortly. We have to turn behind ourselves. And what tends to happen here, this is a very, very common problem, so video yourself and make sure you're not doing it, is that people are afraid to step where they can't see, and what happens is they step behind themselves. So then we have this problem right here. Get into the frame there. We have the toes of catawampus. We're not in alignment. We're not here. We're here. And we're also, we don't know where we're going to end up. We stepped behind ourselves and we haven't spotted over the head yet. So this is a huge problem. Be sure that you're not doing it. So I'll show you correctly and with the spotting, which I'll clarify shortly, but you would turn and pivot. As long as you pivot your feet, you're fine. You need to pivot and you need to let your toes go 180 degrees. So this is going to feel real stupid, but bear with me for a moment. So I want you to try it. All my students do it and they feel dumb, but then they think, oh, okay, that, I see why you made me do that stupid thing. So we're going to put the hands up onto the shoulders, and you want to think of your elbows as little arrows. Okay, this is going to help you also make sure that you're not lopsided, because if one arm is lower than the other, you're going to turn more towards that low arm that's going to pull you off course, just like an airplane that's going to bank and it's going to go in that direction. So. None of that, it has to be very lifted, okay? So we point our elbows, let me make sure my feet are in the frame, I can't see. Okay, and then we're gonna think of being a gingerbread man. Or you can think of your elbows as little marionette strings attached to your feet. So when I move one, I move the other. And wherever the hand goes, the foot is also gonna have to go, okay? So then we're going to go one, again, we'll do it on Melody later. Two, behind yourselves, three. Okay, and you just practice the three first. That is the three point turn, and if you continue on, it becomes a chenet. Make sure you do both directions, don't become lopsided, but we'll go one, change the weight, 180 degrees, pivot your feet, change the weight, pivot, 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 boom. And work on that slowly. You can also work in a bar, or a countertop, or a wall. And this will help you get confident with your feet, with your ankles, and your toes, getting nice and strong. And you should feel tension all the way up into your hip. Feels like I'm poking at my butt, but I'm, I'm poking my hip joint, my hip socket. You should feel control from that hip socket. So you would go, you know, one, use that bar, two, and three. And the slower you work, the more time you have to micro-adjust. You can adjust your trajectory. If you start to lose your balance, you can fix it. You can really get centered. It feels like baby steps, but baby steps are good. So practice slow. Practice with assistance, okay? Another really great tip. I don't have my circular um, resistance band today, but if you have one, if you put that resistance band around your ankles, you know, it needs to be a little bit like just a little tension when you pull it out hip width. Oh my gosh, wonderful drill for doing this because it helps you maintain even distance between your feet. So that's a great thing. I should have thought about that before I started filming, but you know what I'm talking about. If you have one, try it out. The next thing we're going to think about is the spotting of the head and the arms. So they kind of go hand in hand. So again, with this gingerbread or puppet string analogy, we're going to add the head to be associated with the hand and the arm position. And instead of doing the elbows here, we'll just do arms out to the side. Now you want to have your arms in a rounded position. This is pretty much something that we borrow 
almost directly from ballet, and it's not really something we use a whole lot in the rest of the ballet dance vocabulary. But trust me, it helps a lot. Because you don't want to be cutting into space with your arms like this. You want to be aerodynamic. And the best way to be aerodynamic is to go like this. So the elbow, the leading elbow, it's leading here. And the hand is just sort of following. It's not going, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but I'll show you the arms anyway. Take it or leave it. But you would start here. And I would also start sliding to the side, to where I want to go. But when you step, you want to open that arm, changing the weight. Then you're going to step again, and you're going to close it somewhat. Sorry, I keep getting out of frame. But you're going to come about to here. It's about to that hug a beach ball posture. And everything is sloped and rounded. We're not overly bringing the shoulder blades back. This is here. Shoulder blades are flush to the back. Elbows are lifted, and the arms are slightly angling downward as well. But this also really helps to keep them even, because when they close in front of you, if they're lopsided, you're going to see it, and that's going to help out. But okay, so we've done one, two. When we go to the back, this is the hardest part. We'll talk about the head in a second. But we're going to pivot all the way around, and we open again. So if I do a succession of these, a series of them, you're going to see that my arms are going to open, close, open, close, open, close. And I'm probably out of frame there, but it just continues on. And if you were in, you know, if you were not moving, it, it wouldn't feel right because you're going open, and then as you turn your body, your other hand catches up. So it sort of catches up, and then you open again. So you really can't replicate that without the turn, because otherwise it feels like you're doing this. It just, it doesn't work. But the basic pathway is open, close, open, close. And I know it looks very silly with the small steps, but I recommend that that is how you practice your turn. This is a huge pet peeve, and I'll try not to go on a huge rant about it, but you cannot do a turn with your head like this. And you really shouldn't ever have your head like this, but all of us do it. I do it too, sad to admit. But the head has to be back. And I've been in a room sometimes where all I want to do is go around and just push people's foreheads back until they're all standing up straight. But your eyes need to be level, your chin needs to be parallel to the floor, and the head, for God's sake, has to be in line with the rest of your spine. So if you can feel a bump right there where your spine is, you're probably craning your head forward and you need to lift from your ribs and drop your shoulders back and pull your head into alignment there. But it's very important for a turn because again, we become like a top or a gyroscope and if your head is the only thing that is off kilter, it's just going to pull the rest of your body out of alignment. So anyway, so the head has to be back, and this also makes it safe to be looking side to side. And on that note too, if you have neck issues, you have to be especially careful here, and you may need to modify this. Because ideally to do this safely, you need to be able to look 180 degrees. And not with your eyes, but with your head. It needs to be able to go from shoulder to shoulder. And if you can't do that, you need to work on your neck. You maybe need to massage, you need to see a chiropractor, you know, you need to figure out how you can accommodate that. And if you really can't, if you physically cannot do it, you can figure out how to spin without spotting, but it's a lot harder. You have to be very, very aware of your feet and your alignment. So drop a comment if you have a particular issue, and, and maybe I can kind of help. But anyways, so what we're going to do, we're going to use those little baby steps again and we're going to use the arms up again. So everything, head up, back in, arms up, lift it here. So you want to think of your armpits pointing to where you want to go, not down here. No drooping. All right, so up and in, and we're going to step, and we're going to look over the shoulder. So we're looking, and everything is in alignment. So again, boom, all of this side of the body moves as one piece. We change the weight. All right, we're going to pivot, so weight is in the right toe, even if you're not all the way up. Weight's in the right toe. We're going to look over the left shoulder now. Boom. So in that part of the turn, 
Your body is rotating underneath your head. Your head's already there. This is the challenging part. This is the third step is the hardest part. Okay, so you're going to be looking over the left shoulder. You're going to start to pivot. Change your weight to the left, whichever foot you are. And you're going to turn. This is hard to do in slow motion, but you're going to turn and you're going to look before you change your weight. So that is the hard part. It's really like an owl looking around your shoulder. We're just going to practice the turn. So we're looking over the shoulder, just practicing the spotting. Boom, 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 boom. Step one. Keep looking, keep looking. Turn, and then step. Do, 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 do. Boom. Keep looking. Look around. Do, 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 do. All right, and make sure you practice it to the other side. I'm just going to demonstrate on one side for time's sake. But now let's see it with an actual full out turn. So I'm going to go spot, spot, and spot. So the head gets there just a fraction of a second before the foot. And at the, at the very latest at the same time. But here's the thing with the spotting. When you're walking, if you look over at something, you start to walk towards it. If you look up, people tend to start kind of like spiraling around themselves. You will walk towards where you're looking. Same thing goes with your shenay. So what happens very frequently, say I want to go in a straight line, all right? If I have a student who is spotting, they're good here and here. That's the easy part. The hard part here is this, though. And what tends to happen is if the head doesn't go fast enough, the foot doesn't go to 180. It goes to, like, 170. And then you will drift towards the angle. And for a lot of you, if you feel that you can't stay on a straight line, maybe you're off course 90% of the time. That's why. Two things can solve that problem. One, just really committing more to your pivot and your swing to get around 180. And two, really looking. But ask yourself, what point in the turn do you start to drift? Because 90% of the time, it's going to be that third step because we're going to go one, two, if I don't go 180 in here, three, one, ooh, then I'm in the wall <laughs> or off the stage. And this is part of why turns become so challenging and so scary is because there's a lot happening at the same time. And if one little thing goes wrong, then you're in the audience. So, But once you understand the mechanics and how everything has to stack up, it's actually not difficult. It's just complicated. So what I would recommend that you really start before you even begin trying to do a chenet or any kind of traveling turn is work on developing your balance and your ankle strength and your flexibility through your foot. So I will do at some point, um, sorry, pardon the noise outside. At some point I will do a, a strength and stretch for the feet and ankles. So look for that soon and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. But just for now, I'll show you a basic one. You can do this uh, with a bar at home or a wall or a chair or countertop. I recommend practicing in the kitchen. You have counters. You have a little bit of floor space, and usually it's a tile, which is nice to dance on. But all you're going to do, you don't have to turn out or anything for this. Zip up your low belly, tuck that pelvis under, and you're going to shift your weight into your toes. The most important thing first. So you come into the toes, and then you're going to come up and make sure you squeeze all of your leg before you come down. So you're going to come shift forward, rise up. So you should be, like your feet should be as if you are wearing a stiletto. A very high heel. All right, and now a lot of people, once they get up here, they feel very insecure, very off balance, very timid, and then they don't want to turn. And so when you get that fear factor in there, that's when the releve falls out, and that's when the heels come down, and that's where the injuries happen. So the counterintuitive and the difficult thing with this is that when you feel safe, you're more at risk for an injury. So I encourage you to sort of face your fears, get up on your toes, you will be safer. And let me tell you, you might stumble a lot and you might have to correct your feet a lot. You might do the Bambi leg thing. But you are much more likely to be able to safely recover out of a, say, say I'm unstable on my ankles and I go for a chenet and I kind of get a little off balance and I, I fall out of the turn. I mean, nine times out of ten, probably even more than that, more likely than not, you're not going to fall down and hurt yourself. 
you are far more likely to hurt yourself with your feet flat. So, we're going to work on just a couple very brief basics with the feet. Again, there will be more information coming soon. But what you want to be able to do before you do anything is lift your ankle or lift your heel so that it is in line with the big toe joint. So you can see my heel is all the way up here. And you might lift your foot up, you might have stiff feet, you might have plantar fasciitis, you might have stiff ankles, and you might think, uh-oh, my ankle only comes up to here. Now that's okay, you can still work on your turns, but you want to really start working on that now. And the best way to do that is just to stretch your feet. This is a really good one here, you want to place one foot on the ball, get it right in with the ball of the other foot, and you're going to push. You're going to push into the arch muscle. It's also kind of a nice massage there. But you're going to roll that out. You can go on the other side. Like so. And then, of course, just the more that you do this, you know, you could be standing around, standing in line at the grocery store, waiting for your food to cook, whatever. You have a second, you know, and work on that ankle flexibility. Work on that foot flexibility. Press into it. Stretch that. Stretch it out. You can also use resistance bands. You can arch and point your toes with the resistance band wrapped around your foot. And that is going to very quickly build your strength and your flexibility. So do not be discouraged because a little bit of work will get you there really quickly. The other thing to consider is ankles. What's very, very important is the alignment here. So if you look down at my ankle here, you can see that the weight from my hip and my knee all goes through the inside of the ankle to the big toe joint. So there's about a dollar coin size spot right here where you want all of your weight to center on those toes. What you do not want to happen is for your weight with the weak ankle to shift to the outside and this is going to cause pressure on your small toes and they are very small the bones in those toes are very small and very fragile and you can break your toes if you repeatedly do this a lot if you sickle your foot you can also strain and pull the outside of the ankle here so this is no this is right all right so strong straight legs strong straight ankles and you're going to really get your weight into that and remember that your center of gravity is going to follow your heels. So my heels are going to pull me back and pull me down. So when you get your heels over your toes, then this is where you have your alignment. If I drop my heels a little bit, see how that pulls me out of the line so you can see from the side. You can see there's a line and it's a diagonal and it's a line, you know. So the higher you can get your heels, the better. You want to make sure that your toes are always staying to the same direction. So you're doing that with the pivot. And remember, with the pivot, you're sort of twisting the foot. Boom. So you can practice twisting this way. Boom. Boom. And that is coming from the leg muscles all working together. But you're sort of pressing into the floor and you're gonna really work your foot muscles and your leg muscles. So that's a great thing to practice what I was just doing. Even though we're not really going into this position, this will help you with your ability to pivot your feet. And then you can think of doing it on one leg, right? Boom. And then that applies to your chine because when you step, you want to rotate all the way around onto the ball of the foot. The other thing that's important to note for a turn is that you cannot, cannot do a turn when you're slouching and your body's loose. Turns are not loosey-goosey. They have to be very pulled in. You have to think of your center of gravity. And again, going back to that gyroscope analogy, if you've ever seen a gyroscope, it has that straight line in the center, and the second that it starts to wobble, it goes out and it will not spin anymore. But as long as that center of gravity is perfectly lined up, that gyroscope will spin so perfectly that it looks like it's not moving. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up. I'm sure there's some video on YouTube that shows a gyroscope in motion. It's really cool. It's kind of like a top. 
and you can visualize the top as well. But regardless, the important thing there is that the center of gravity is lifted and centered. So think of your tailbone pointing down, as, as we often talk about, and then you're going to squeeze your low belly, pull it in. You're going to squeeze in your ribs, zip those up. You can check out my zip up your ribcage tutorial if you need to. And then we're going to think about squeezing every single leg muscle that you have, <laughs> every leg muscle you can feel. And you want to gently push and rise into your legs and come down. And please note that when you're not warm, you're not going to feel on balance. Uh, I probably didn't even warm up enough for this video, but time's a ticking. But I can assure you, when I first started working on this, that I thought, okay, if we're going to do turns, I better warm up. You know, you get out in the studio and you're stiff from the day and you're not on your legs. So give yourself a little time to warm up. So that's why when we do turns, I'll face my mirror here, we would usually spend some time just centering out, lifting, coming down, just being able to work on squeezing. So do several of those before you even attempt a turn. All right, dancers, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this was a helpful tutorial for you. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I uh, read through my comments maybe once a week or a little more often than that, so you will hear back from me. You can also send me a direct message or find me on Facebook and Instagram and all that jazz. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and keep dancing.